fire card? Yes. Gina, you're wearing sweatpants. It's Monday. So? So that's against the rules, and you can't sit with us. Whatever. Those rules aren't real. They were real that day I wore a vest, because that vest was disgusting. You can't sit with us! In this dramatic retelling of the Crown of Thorns Sea Stars becoming overpopulated in the Great Barrier Reef, we can see that our deadly beauties, portrayed by the plastics, no longer can gain anything from the Great Barrier Reef, or Regina, and are leaving her behind for a place that they can obtain nutrients, or social gratification. Much like after Katie joined the plastics, the balance of the friend group was thrown off. The overpopulation of Crown of Thorns Sea Stars can damage the Great Barrier Reef. When it was just Regina, Gretchen, and Karen, they lived in harmony and ruled the school. But after the addition of Katie to their friend group, this balance was gone. Spanning over 2,300 kilometers along the Northeast Australian coast, the Great Barrier Reef is home to over 9,000 known species of aquatic plants and animals. While it is easy to become preoccupied in the reef's abundance of life and beauty, since 1962, divers have been especially cautious of this deadly beauty, the Crown of Thorns sea star. The Crown of Thorns, a canther plantsi, is a species of sea star that is native to the waters of the Indo-Pacific region, named for their resemblance to the biblical Crown of Thorns. Despite their enticing appearance, the crown of thorns is also poisonous, containing a neurotoxin on their spines that can cause nausea, vomiting, and swelling that can last for several weeks. These spines are brittle and can break off and become embedded in the skin of whatever touches them and need to be surgically removed. Aside from their poison, where the issue arises with the crown of thorns is in their diet. They feed on coral by initiating an extrusion of the stomach that engulfs corals and digests their tissues. A crown of thorns can crawl throughout coral reefs at rates up to 20 kilometers per hour, which explains how outbreaks can be so damaging to coral reefs, as each crown of thorns can damage up to 10 square meters of coral per year. When an outbreak of crown of thorns occurs, they can deplete 90% of the reef's coral tissue. One female crown of thorns can lay between 60 to 65 million eggs per breeding season, leading to rapid overpopulation. Some major reasons why there have been such large and damaging outbreaks of these crown of thorns can be linked back unsurprisingly to the actions of humans. The increase in nutrient concentration in these habitats due to runoff, along with the overfishing of their largest predator, the giant triton, has exacerbated the dramatic increase of these aggressive species. What we know about crown of thorns starfish is that they communicate through chemical plumes that are released from aggregated starfish, which makes normally sedentary starfish highly active. A study was conducted with the help of multiple scientific institutes, which studied the genomic characteristics of this communication and how that knowledge can contribute to the biocontrol of this species. To do this, researchers first examined the genomic DNA from the testes and sperm of two wild-caught crown of thorns, one from the Great Barrier Reef, and one from Okinawa, Japan. They also took RNA and tissue samples from both of these starfish. The researchers then collected multiple crown of thorn starfish from the Great Barrier Reef and housed them in black fiberglass tanks containing seawater and a Y-shaped maze. The arms of this maze connected to one pipe that was flowing with ambient seawater and one pipe with water that came from a tank that other crown of thorn starfish had been aggregated in. The behavior related to the chemical plumes from the aggregations was then recorded for up to eight hours. They found that the genomic sequences of the geographically separated starfish were highly similar, even having 98.8% nucleotide identity. This similarity, considering the great distance of the crown of thorns, allows researchers to apply their findings to all crown of thorns starfish across the Indo-Pacific region in one analysis. Regarding the genomic characteristics of the chemical plumes, researchers found that the protein content released was made up of mainly signaling factors and starfish-specific proteins and enzymes. Now that the components that make up the released chemical plumes are known and understood, researchers believe they can use this information to develop peptide mimics that will be effective in targeting and the biocontrol of the crown of thorns. The understanding of this genomic data can also be useful for the ecological and population studies done on the causes of crown of thorn outbreaks and can help manage the species at a regional scale. This management of the crown of thorns could greatly benefit the coral reefs. While it may seem impossible to try to get rid of these organisms, some small-scale efforts are being made to try to control their population in the Great Barrier Reef. 
Divers have been tasked with injecting each leg of the crown of thorns with its own stomach acid as a way to kill them. This task is very tedious and requires a high amount of labor, but has proven effective in controlling their population size. After injecting each leg, they are left alone, and after about 24 hours, there is nothing left of the crown of thorns. This is due to an immune response within the organism, which causes it to self-destruct. Another population control effort comes from natural predators. The tray triton snail, the homphead maori wrasse, the starry pufferfish, and the titan triggerfish are all able to hunt and consume the crown of thorns.